chocolate. We love it. It's one of the world's most popular treats. In the UK alone, we each eat an average of around three bars a week. But you don't have to look too far before you find the chocolate industry itself is far from sweet. Many farmers who grow the cocoa for our treats are underpaid and exploited. That means they can't earn enough for the basic human rights many of us take for granted, including food, education and housing. So how can we stop chocolate from leaving a bitter aftertaste? Let's find out. Chocolate's history dates back well over 2,000 years to Mexico, but most is now grown in West Africa. 60% of the world's cocoa comes from Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire. The main ingredient of chocolate, cocoa, grows on trees in pods. It takes a cocoa tree five years to grow pods, which are cut down with sharp knives and cracked open. Each pod has 20 to 60 seeds covered in a white pulp. The pulp is laid under banana leaves or in wooden crates and turned occasionally over five to seven days. The pulp ferments to leave sticky cocoa beans, which are laid out in the sun to dry. Growing cocoa is hard work and relies heavily on the weather. With changing weather patterns, cocoa farmers face more uncertainty as crops are more at risk of rain damage or disease. A brotier has been farming cocoa for over 25 years and knows how difficult it can be. The maladies are frequent. Diseases are more and more frequent because of climate change and the excessive heat. The trees often die. From the cocoa farm, the cocoa beans are sold to traders who export them. Most of these go to Europe, where they are made into liquid cocoa, cocoa butter and cocoa powder mixed with milk or soy and made into chocolate. Cocoa is big business. In the UK alone, the chocolate industry is worth four billion pounds a year. But cocoa farmers are at the very end of the supply chain and see very little of cocoa's value. They have little control over how much they sell their cocoa for, with prices set far away. A typical cocoa farmer in Côte d'Ivoire lives on less than one dollar a day. That's around 80p. Not enough to provide for the basics for a family. To make matters worse, in the past few years, the price of cocoa has plummeted, pushing many cocoa farmers further into poverty. The cocoa prices are disastrous. When a farmer gets up in the morning, he is always worried. How will he be able to feed and care for his family? How can he send his children to school? Fair trade has helped. For fair trade cocoa farmers like a brotier, when the price of cocoa drops, it can't drop below the fair trade minimum price, which acts as a safety net. When the market price falls, we automatically use the fair trade minimum price. This allows the producer to keep farming and even to improve the production. On top of this, for every ton of cocoa sold on fair trade terms, the farmer organization, the cooperative, receives an additional sum, the fair trade premium, to invest in their business and their community as they see fit. This might mean investing money in a school, health center, or clean drinking water. This is Rosine. She is a farmer at a fair trade certified cocoa cooperative called Kayat. I've seen that fair trade has helped us a lot in cocoa farming. The fair trade premium has enabled us to do many things. It has enabled us to advance our children's education and also we use the fair trade premium to build for the future. Using fair trade premium, Kayat have built nursery schools and rebuilt damaged school buildings so that young children can attend school safely and their mothers can go to work. They have installed a water pump for access to clean water and have invested in large warehouses and a number of trucks so that they can store and transport their cocoa beans efficiently. Working together in a cooperative 
also means farmers can share knowledge and access training. Certification avec les formations de la bonne pratique agricole. Since getting fair trade certification and training in good agricultural practices, I can see that it has greatly increased my production. In 2017, I had one ton, and in 2018, I had 1.5 tons. So I can see that the training from fair trade enabled me to increase the income from my farm. Rosine is also the secretary of the Women's Society at Kayat. Women in West Africa often have less access than men to land and credit and are often underrepresented in farmers' organizations, public meetings, and leadership roles in communities. At the moment, there are lots of women who don't realize that they have a voice, don't feel empowered or know that they can be at the forefront of something. There are lots of women who have not understood this yet. Years of studies have shown that when women have access to their own independent income, the rate of development for the whole community increases. Anne-Marie works to empower cocoa farmers across West Africa. The women wake up early in the morning before the whole family, before everybody, around 4 or 4.30, they are awake. Then cook food for the whole family, send children to school, take their machete and their uh, staff to the farm, go and work hard on the farm, come in the house, cook the dinner for the whole family, and they sleep. They are the last person to go on bed. Wake up early in the morning before everybody and sleep after everybody. This is the reason why they deserve also more attention, because they know more than the rest. At Kayat, Rosine works with 400 other women in the Women's Society and they have invested fair trade premium in diversification projects such as growing other crops so that they can earn an independent income that doesn't rely on fluctuating cocoa prices. Diversification is important. Having manioc, bananas and chilies in the field brings us a lot of revenue. This benefits the children because outside of the cocoa harvesting season, when the income isn't there, it's the women who having sold contribute to the family income to pay for school fees. The benefits of fair trade are evident, from training support to the minimum price to the fair trade premium. Thanks to consumers choosing fair trade chocolate, many cocoa farmers have been able to make a real difference in their communities. But the sad truth is that certification alone is not enough to transform a global industry on this scale. Not all fair trade certified farmers are able to sell all of their crop on fair trade terms. When companies agree to pay on fair trade terms, they are already taking an important step towards solving the problem of living income. But communities in West Africa need to sell much more of their cocoa at higher prices for things to change properly. We can help to change this by choosing fair trade and showing retailers that farmers deserve a fairer deal. But we need to go even further. We need to build on the achievements of fair trade certification and encourage others to do more to change the cocoa industry. Farmers deserve the basic human right of a living income. Enough to cover a decent standard of living. For me, the living income is this amount that will help the producer to be able to take care of his family and reinvest in the farm for a future. In Côte d'Ivoire, a living income that will cover food, health, education, a decent home and safe water is estimated to be $2.50 a day for each person in the household. Just under two pounds. This would be the price of a large bar of chocolate. And yet most farmers get far less than this. If the situation does not change, I think people will stop cocoa farming because the incomes are too low. People are going to grow other crops, such as palm oil. I do not want to be mean or alarmist, but we have to acknowledge that young people do not want to be cocoa farmers anymore because it is not profitable. 
Fairtrade is working towards a living income for farmers. Over the next few years, Fairtrade are going to be working really hard with chocolate brands, with retailers and with government. And we're aiming to seek consensus that a living income for cocoa farmers and their families is what everybody wants to achieve. But this is going to be hard and we're only going to be able to do it if the people who love to eat chocolate in the UK join in as well. There are traders, chocolate manufacturers and retailers in the chain who all take a share of the price paid for a finished product. Most recognise that farmers' incomes are too low for cocoa to be sustainable the way the industry currently works and are keen to address this. There's been lots of initiatives in the past to try and raise productivity. If we want to move to a truly sustainable cocoa sector, then we have to be putting and measuring household income of cocoa farmers at the heart of projects. That's exactly what Fairtrade is doing and it's what everybody else should be doing. When you choose Fairtrade, you are showing retailers that you want the farmers at the other end of the supply chain to get a living income. We will be working hard to transform the chocolate industry to make this happen. Together, let's make living incomes a reality for cocoa farmers.